I trust that lunch was good. I had to go back to the, the ranch and, and take care of some of the chickens, but let's see. <laughs> right, so um, the presentation this afternoon is, is going to take a look um, closer at, at what has been happening in our region, and it comes out of a session that we had in the Bahamas, and uh, we then thought that we should try to chronicle uh, the information as to where different countries are in the process. So the information that is compiled here is really uh, together out of what our members reported. Some of the members weren't there, so we followed up after the meeting to try and actually um, put together the information that would give us a good enough picture. So as you have heard before, the CBU is over 47 years old, and we are involved with members in several different Caribbean territories, over 24 territories, or I think over, over 20 territories. It could be exactly 24. The union is 40 years, um, 48 years old, and we'll be looking forward to celebrating our 50th year. I think that meeting is going to be in a twin island nation somewhere, um, and we will all gather there and beat some pan and uh, not to give any clue as to where it might be. Uh, the, the union is open to indigenous broadcast um, members, um, both radio and television members. Um, we have production houses. We also have um, broadcasters who are satellite broadcasters, cable operators, and we also have organizations, including some government information um, entities as well as training institutions from across the region. We have two segments of membership. You can be a full member and you can be an associate member and uh, there is qualification based on what your activities are. Um, all broadcasters have to be full members. So uh, the CBU developed a policy position on digital switchover back in, I think we started that work in 20 late in 2012, finished in 2013. Um, it was discussed and adopted at the 2014 meeting of the uh, CBU, and it was shared with the um, CARICOM Secretariat, which then uh, had a special meeting of COTED, which considered it, and that meeting didn't only include the Council of um, Trade and Economic Development Ministers, but it also included our information and telecommunications ministers, and I think we had participation at that level from uh, one of the OECS territories, from Jamaica, and also from uh, Guyana. The paper essentially evaluated, from our perspective, uh, the different standards that were available, the compression technology that was there, and uh, what we thought, based on what our engineers were telling us, were the best things that we should do. We looked at um, the possible business options. We looked at issues to do with e-waste. And uh, we tried to find a formula that would help us to be convinced that going down this path, we would be able to spend a pot of money on new technologies and would be able to make it back in small economies that essentially have um, advertising as their primary source of earning at a time when the advertising revenue was being split up in many different ways on many different platforms. At the end of the day, the union did not recommend a single standard to be adopted for the Caribbean because we recognize that historically there were things that were happening. Um, those members that are from territories that are um, previous overseas um, territories of the UK uh, were going in one direction. Um, those who are closer to the U.S. going in another direction and so on. So we did not recommend a single standard for the region. At the CBU's 2017 meeting, which was just completed in the Bahamas in August, um, there was a significant concern expressed in all our deliberations about what really is the economic model, what is the business model for our entities going forward. There is everything that appears to be in train to embrace the new technologies, to make sure that broadband works, to um, provide a space for cable to be able to um, maximize uh, their survival for 
um, the new newer technologies in mobile to have space, all of that seemed to have been um, chipping away at what it is that the indigenous broadcasters um, were doing and we had to be as we say in Jamaica, smalling up ourselves to ensure that the new players could come into the space. And at that time, you still have the, the imperative of the broadcasters being able to reach all our populations or most of our populations, uh, trying to do national coverage. Most of us in uh, very expensive um, VHF uh, transmitter networks. So what is the new business model? that we would adopt that would allow us to have a declining set of advertising resources coming our way, not having other services being expanded uh, for us in, in our stream of activities, but to be able to find the funds to transition and to survive as, as we continued. So our businesses were discussed in the Bahamas and we were very concerned that um, decisions needed to be taken that would lead to an equitable reorganization of the media ecosystem that would see us surviving because at the end of the day, you do need to have that public broadcaster, whether it is privately owned or not, but public in terms of its mandate, that is going to be there and able to, to ensure that the interest of the public in terms of receiving credible, reliable information is the main driver in what it is that we do. So we had the survey to look at where things were. And I'm going to take you through where the different um, countries are. And this is the information that was presented. So there might be representatives from different countries here who could um, assist us further in terms of information that they can share to either update um, the information that is gathered here. Anguilla, one of the um, British overseas territories that is a member, um, Anguilla has no free-to-air broadcaster. Uh, they really serve the television market entirely as a cable endeavor and, and some um, uh, direct-to-home systems. But there is not 100% penetration. So you do have people who are on the dark side of even the analog divide even as we are talking about going forward in a digital space. And the recent hurricane, as you will see in all the territories that were affected by it, the recent hurricane brought home to a lot of um, people how much they were vulnerable because they could not see what had happened in other sections of their, their country because up to this point, many of them still have not had a return of of um, subscriber cable television services to them that would allow them to get some form of information and there is no broadcaster. In most of these territories, um, they can be served by one transmitter and not even a high power transmitter. So it would have been relatively easy um, given help that, that was being received. And we got help for some of them from the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation and so on they could have put up a, a low power transmitter and have information shared um, reasonably quickly afterwards. But we saw that um, this is a problem at a time when they are in crisis for them accessing information. <coughs> Antigua and Barbuda is an interesting um, case because it, this is a state-owned entity. In fact, Antigua and Barbuda is one of those entities in the Caribbean where their broadcasting service is actually a department of government. And I've always said to them that it's interesting um, to be in pursuit of um, information and, and to be also bound by the Official Secrets Act. But um, in Antigua, they are the only free-to-air provider um, in that country, one free-to-air provider. And it has not had free-to-air service for the past year. So after the hurricane, when we reached out to them and said, well, um, how can we help you? Um, what are the frequencies on which your transmitters operate? They said, well, we haven't used transmitters since last year, October, because we can't get any spare parts for it. So then the discussion about where are you in digital switchover was held. And um, they have not had any discussion about digital switchover. The sector has not discussed it. They have not had any policy position put forward on it. The broadcasters are planning and hoping that they will get a transmitter sometime in 2018. 
and they have decided without consultation with anyone else that they are going to adopt the American standard. And so they are looking for an eight years transmission system sometime in 2018 um, as their path forward. Interestingly, 35% of their population does not have access to TV now in their homes. They only have access when they go somewhere else or if they visit their neighbor who, who has it. So again, we take a lot for granted um, in terms of how we think through these things when we have the discussions, but there are many individuals who on a day-to-day -day basis know they don't have access to the type of information that we have in this digital world. For the um, Dutch Caribbean territories, um, Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao, they have free-to-air entities, um, two in Aruba, one in Bonaire, and four in Curacao. None of those um, at the moment is digital. None of them has made a decision about where they will go. Uh, the telecommunications operator there operates um, its, its cable services in DVB-T, whatever their, techn their, their technical standard is, but it's, it's the European standard. And um, the broadcasters are just doing their thing, um, upgrading their equipment to um, HD, uh, delivering services to the cable operator. And interestingly, um, in the Dutch territories, they are all linked to a telecommunications operator. So the funding of their development is as a result of what the telecoms provider allows because their advertising model has not generated sufficient advertising to allow them to replace equipment at a level that would, would fund them and sustain them. So it's on the, on the, at the behest of what the telecoms um, do for them. The Bahamas is an interesting case because the Bahamas has um, introduced uh, uh, ATSC 1.0, not just in, in, in terms of um, its broadcast, but it also has gone high definition in all of its production services. And um, it introduced um, ATSC 1.0. A few years ago, back in 2012, they have been working well, but this is only in, on the main island. The family islands still do not have um, any other service other than the analog service. And I think they have 17 islands that are occupied. Only one of them um, has that. Their transition, um, they indicated, was smooth. It was funded by government. It couldn't have been funded out of their advertising budgets. Um, they are government owned, it was funded from that. So right now they do dual transmission um, because they do um, ATSC on the main island and then elsewhere they do um, analog services. In terms of Barbados, uh, the, in Barbados again there is an interesting um, dynamic there because there's one free-to-air entity, it's owned by the government and up to a few years ago the government also owned the only cable operation there and an MMDS service, a wireless cable service. I think since then they have granted licenses for cables, so I think there are now three cable operators operating there. But there has been no discussion and no decision reported on where Barbados is going in terms of choice of standard and date and time for them to seek to move their free-to-air broadcast service into a, a digital space. Bermuda has one free-to-air television station, and since May of this year, it has been operating in the ATSC 1.0 standard, and it's doing so um, using UHF um, frequencies. The decision um, was driven entirely by the private sector. Uh, they took the decisions as to where they intended to go. They have not had any difficulty from the authorities saying you can't do this. Um, but they have not also had anything from the authorities saying that we are thinking you should do that. So they are simply proceeding um, along what lines they believe should be the things that they do. Uh, there is no policy um, uh, that has been articulated and there is no timeline that has been set for them to complete it. The British Virgin Islands, another of those overseas territories, British overseas territories, total cable market, no decision on digital. In fact, when um, we spoke in the Bahamas, the representative there said that there has not been a discussion he has recalled in his last 10 to 15 years about anything to do with that. 
Um, and again, we saw when, when they, on September 5, when um, they had the hurricane hit, they were totally decimated and had nothing for television, still don't have any television services there except for people who have gotten satellite dishes up. Um, essentially, they, they download applications and try to watch um, overseas services um, because their internet service is back. But totally in the dark as far as indigenous television production is concerned. In Belize, there are two free-to-air broadcasters, but there has been no discussion on digital switchover, no timeline set, nothing happening there. So the Cayman Islands, um, not very different. One free-to-air broadcaster, but no discussions on digital switchover. Um, it's a strong cable market, however, and so there's a local cable channel that is um, providing local content on cable, but no interest really in talking about DSO. For Dominica, Dominica was one of those territories that was hard hit by the recent um, uh, set of hurricanes that devastated a number of territories. And before that, reports of no discussion at all and no decision about digital switchover um, in Dominica. And Dominica, I believe, does not have a free-to-air um, broadcaster. They have had a few local cable channels that have been operated there on cable platforms. So again, Dominica would be counted in the set of um, entities that um, have not had any decisions there. In Cuba, and I got my alphabet mixed up in, in terms of my slides here because I went to Dominica and then going back to Cuba. But um, in Cuba, there's one central free-to-air broadcaster and there are over 20 substations that they operate is, is what our representative from Cuba reported. Um, they are adopting the Chinese standard and um, it's being provided to them as a grant. So they will not have a difficulty at all. Uh, in Grenada, the two free-to-air broadcasters in Grenada have had no discussion at all about digital switchover um, or an analog switch-off date. Um, they have some high definition and some standard definition equipment in production services that they use, but in terms of the transmission, there is nothing that has been determined there. Guyana, very interesting all the time. Population of just over 750,000 people, 20 free-to-air broadcast television stations in Guyana serving that population of less than a million. Um, extensive discussions have been reported in Guyana. Um, in fact, one of our board members is from Guyana and said that the consultations have been intensive in the last 12 months, but there is no decision on a standard. And uh, although they have not decided on a standard, they have not had a roadmap, they have not had um, anything to, to say where the technical things are going, they have set 2020 as the date for their digital switchover. Haiti, three national broadcasters in Haiti, many regional broadcasters there. There's at least one DVB-T2 um, regional broadcaster who is expanding in Haiti, and that seems to be what is driving others to get into the um, television business, the, the digital television business, with DVB-T2 as a standard that they are using. For Jamaica, I think that we had information from Carlene um, earlier today, which I will not contradict. I, I was trying to find something to contradict. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not often that we, 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 sh we agree. You know? I, I even found it hard to have the word come out. Um, <laughs> I was thinking of another word. but <laughs> Yes, but um, we have had extensive discussions in Jamaica. Um, I think our relationship has gotten better since Carlene and I have been speaking more than, than Cordell and I, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, but we have had extensive um, consultations in Jamaica, and we, we know where we are, and we do urge that we need to get to that point where, where we make our decisions about um, the critical timelines that we have to implement now. I think the time has come. I think we have talked a lot. We have gone through many permutations of the challenges. Um, I think that ATSC 3.0 is here. I think we had a technical committee recommendation of 2.0. We have gone past that. I think we have agreed now that um, the 3.0 standard 
and I was happy to hear both the ATAC and the DVB um, representatives um, concur that they are essentially able to do the same thing, um, save and accept some things that bits and bytes that the technical people will talk about in the background. So I think that, that we are going to be we are going to be fine. Um, and, and we're looking forward to, to holding hands and going forward. Not holding hands with me, Carly. Oh, with Carly, yeah. You were, you were nodding at everything I was saying, so I was watching carefully. Um, Monserrat, um, no broadcaster there, total cable market, um, no digital switch over discussion taking place. Now, with 5,000 people, um, this is not really a big story in the Caribbean for most of you, but Montserrat is where my wife is from, so this is absolutely important for you to know. <laughs> Uh, St. Kitts and Nevis, um, they have not had free-to-air broadcasting for almost 10 years. Um, although there's a free-to-air broadcaster, they have been delivering by cable, although less than 100% of the population has cable. So again, there are people there who are not having access to regular TV services. St. Lucia, in St. Lucia, there are two indigenous free-to-air broadcasters, no discussion on um, digital switchover was what I was advised by the main television operator there, Helen Television Services. Over 65% um, cable penetration, so the population there depends heavily on, on what they get from the cable services. St. Martin, I'm going to run over because that's not um, a major market, and um, while they are members, not, not much there. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Pretty much like Dominica and, um, and St. Lucia, no discussion there, nothing um, significant to report. Suriname, I'm going to jump over because we have a representative from Suriname who is coming next, but just to say that we find the Suriname case study to be a, a very interesting one. And Trinidad and Tobago, um, six indigenous free-to-air broadcasters after 2015, target date had passed. We, they have reported that they don't have a new date that has been set. And um, while there has been extensive discussion and an announcement that they would go DVB-T2, there was a subsequent announcement that they would go ATAC. So they have reported that they are a little bit confused at the moment as to which standard that they will have. Just to make some quick observations, 16 of the 24 countries that I reported on just now that were highlighted here have had no discussions on digital switchover or analog switch off. 16 of 24 countries in the Caribbean. I think that that is a, a significant challenge that we have to help them um, address. In 17 of the 24 territories um, that we have examined, there has been no discussion on DSO at all. Uh, broadcasters have mostly made steps forward on the basis of what obtains in their market that is important. And the two critical things to note here are that the broadcasters that have moved forward either have had a grant, in the case of Cuba, they have had telecoms to determine where they go as their main funding source, or they have been government owned, as in the case of the Bahamas. Those are the models. The one exception is what happened in Bermuda. Bermuda had private sector fund its transition. But remember that Bermuda has the fourth highest per capita income in the world, including a per capita income that is more than three times the per capita, per capita income of the United States of America. So for the rest of us who are not in Bermuda's position and we are private sector media, you know that we are going to have the challenge as to how we fund this. So from the CBU standpoint, we are encouraging our policymakers and our regulators that the time has come for us now to set some clear things in place. Let us decide on our standards. Let us decide on our format going forward. Let us set the switch off date when we start the process and the analog switch off date when we close the process because we are also now running out of analog equipment in our networks. And we need those decisions to help us to go forward. Thank you.